Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. David Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new teen therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. David is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. Hello, Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. And welcome everyone to episode 199. This is our seventh in our series of how to crush negative thoughts. Today we're going to be talking about labeling. Before we go into that, I think we have uh, had a flood of fabulous emails and we're just going to read two of them to you. And then I want to put in a little plug for my new book, Feeling Great, which you can pre-order now on Amazon. And it will be out in September. And it's for the general public as well as for mental health professionals. And if you pre-order it, uh, then it, it will count on the day the book is released uh, for its standing on the bestseller list. So that would be a huge benefit uh, to me. And now for some beautiful praise for our wonderful Rhonda. <laughs> well, thank you so much. For Dave. David is encouraging me to read these, although they're a little embarrassing. Um, this first one is from Victoria, and she's writing all the way from Mexico City, and she wrote, Hello, Rhonda. I've listened to your Corona podcasts, and I want to tell you that I have loved them all. You're a wonderful host, sweet, affectionate, and empathic. David is very calm and comfortable with you, and together you do a wonderful job. I love that you're a simple person with great values. You don't need to have a big ego. You're authentic, and that gives you a very big plus because those of us who listen to the podcast notice and feel confident and comfortable in what you're showing us. That was from Victoria. Thank you, Victoria. And this is from Carol. And she wrote, Hi, Rhonda. I'm listening to your podcast, 192, Matter and Antimatter, and I'm so grateful for it. I relate to everything you said, and your words helped me understand myself better. I'm so impressed with your willingness and your courage, your kindness and strength to talk and share this with the audience. Many thanks, Carol. I just have to uh, second that. I thought the courage that you've showed in that personal work was, was jaw-dropping. And so many of us, we try to hide our feelings, like particularly if you're feeling jealous. Whoever is going to admit to, to, to feeling jealous? It's we, we shamefully hide that feeling and we shamefully hide our, our anger. We sh and, and, and then we, we kind of think there's, there's something wrong with us because we've got these kooky feelings we shouldn't have. And when you put it out there like that and then crush your negative thoughts, it was, it was so inspiring. And I was just so filled with admiration and, and gratitude for you, Rhonda. And I just know you, we got dozens of emails from people saying, that because you, Rhonda, were so courageous to share your feelings. And people said, I have those kind of feelings too. And you made me feel so much better about myself. God bless you, Rhonda, you're, you're, you're my hero. And that's, that's one of the, the paradoxes of team therapy and perhaps spirituality, if you want to put it like that, when you, Stop hiding the part of yourself that you're so ashamed of and, and, and share it with openness and vulnerability. It turns into your, your, your greatest asset and, and uh, allows so many people to, to feel close to you. And, but it's scary because uh, who, who wants to be the one to, to risk it and you know, tell people how, how, you're really, how you're really feeling inside? But boy, that was... Uh, you're, you're my hero there, uh, Rhonda. Oh, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And I just can't, uh, I can't express enough my, my admiration and gratitude to you and Matt who are, you know, who guided me to enlightenment and, you know, yeah. it's gonna, I'm going to start crying that the two of you are just, you know. I love Matt too. I mean, boy, so what a privilege to, to, to work with him. He's just so gentle, so compassionate, so humble, and yet such a, a, a brilliant uh, 
therapist and uh, j just a great human being. Yeah. Well, let's stop stop this and get on to our topic for the day, which is the seventh in our uh, series on the Cognitive Distortion Starter Kit. And we're going to be working on the distortion called labeling. And then uh, the next three that we have that I think will bring us to the conclusion will be emotional reasoning, should statements, and blame, self-blame and other and other blame. But labeling is such a, an interesting distortion. It's really an extreme form of overgeneralization. And, uh, uh, and, and, and there, you, you can label yourself, which, which creates shame, depression, anxiety, defectiveness, inadequacy. And then you can, you can uh, label other people and, and, and that then labeling others creates feelings of anger and rage and, 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 and resentment. So, you know, self-blame is, there's two types of self-blame. One is where, where you're labeling your, ro your role. You say, I'm a bad X, Y, or Z. I'm a bad mom. I'm a bad dad. I'm a bad husband. I'm a bad therapist or something where you're looking at your role and writing yourself off. And then an even more ex extreme form of labeling would be where, where you're labeling yourself uh, with uh, statements like, I am unlovable. You get rejected by someone you cared about. It hurts. Most of us hurt a lot when we're rejected. And then you say, I am unlovable, as if you had a self that was unlovable. Or I'm defective, as, as if you had some kind of inherent defect in your identity or personality or a defect in, in, in yourself. Or when you fail at something, you can say, I'm a failure, as opposed to saying, I'm failing at X, Y, or Z. You say, I'm a failure. Or another extreme form of, of, of labeling is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm worthless. Uh, I'm inferior, as if, again, you have this, this self that, that's no good. And then when you're labeling other people, uh, you, you say, oh, he's a jerk, he, he's, he's a loser. And, that, and then you're thinking that the other person is entirely bad, has a bad essence, and then you feel hatred and moral superiority and you feel uh, judgmental and you look down on them like you could say, oh, he's, he, he's a lefty, he's one of those California lefties, as if liberals in California are somehow evil or, or inferior. They say, oh, he's one of those right-wing you know, supremacist jerks or something, something like that, or, you know, uh, and, and then you imagine that the, the other person is a total, total negative. Uh, you know, Hitler, Hitler did that in, in uh, World War II. He, he labeled people, he labeled the, the Jews as uh, rats uh, uh, and, and pictured them like that. He got a whole country into hateful, sadistic, cruel, cruel behavior. And I think between self-labeling and, and other labeling, uh, that's most of the suffering in, in the world in terms of depression and despair, as well as uh, violence and hatred and warfare. So, that, so that's the overview. So you're saying you, people, um, you know, they're not looking at each other, themselves or each other in, in the complex nuances of of all of, of their entire person, they're just labeling them one thing. Like I'm, I'm bad. Like yeah. Instead of, instead of saying, you know, maybe I made a mistake, or maybe I, you know, I chose, I chose to do something that probably would have been smarter for me not to have done that. Like I am a bad person. Yeah, that's right. And it's and and you put yourself in a trap like like that, a, 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 a kind of a, a, a trap of, of of misery. I can remember uh, years ago. Uh, I was in the, in the train station in Philadelphia. I was never much of an athlete growing up because, uh, you know, in high school, I, got, I was one of the first to get cut from the football team and one of the first to get cut from the basketball team. And if you get cut, then you never get a chance to get in shape and build your muscles and you're kind of kind of out of it. So I, I figured I was more of a nerd than a, than a jock or something. And then once I remember, 
I was in the Philadelphia train station. I was just starting my practice, and I saw a book on, on jogging. And, I, and jogging was getting big. And then I thought, oh, gosh, that's too bad. I'm, I'm just not a jogger. I'm not a runner. As if, you know, I had some kind of a self that wasn't allowed to run. And then I said to myself, well, how many steps would you have to run before you were, quote, a runner? And I said, well, maybe one or two steps. So I took, I just jogged one or two steps. I said, oh, I'm a runner now. <laughs> and, and then I started running and, you know, I got to where I was, I ran a couple half marathons and stuff like that. It was never champion or anything like that, but it's it's like, it was like getting out of prison because I'd, I'd had this idea that I had a self that was one, one way or the other. And uh, these labels can cause a lot of pain. We're going to talk about two techniques for labeling. First of all, I want to say once again that we don't go around attacking people's labels. Someone has to come to me or to you, Rhonda, asking for help. And, uh, and so I'm always helping people. I'm not evangelizing. And secondly, when someone comes for help, we, we always want to do T equals testing, see how, how depressed and upset they are, then empathize without trying to help. Then the A, the assessment of resistance, T-E-A-M, assessment of resistance, melt, melt away their, their resistance. And then, and only then, do we come in with M equals methods and select a thought and identify the distortions and, and crush that, that thought using a variety of techniques. And I have actually have now over 100 techniques I use, and you never know what technique is going to work for, for someone. Uh, so we're just going to limit ourselves to be specific and let's define terms. And we're going to, Rhonda, you and I are going to demonstrate uh, let's define terms. And then we have a wonderful audio clip for you of an actual excerpt from a therapy session with a courageous gentleman named Bradley. Uh, and uh, it, it's going to illustrate be specific for, for, for labeling. But let's, let's talk about let's, let's define terms first. Okay. So, um, you know, if the label that you put on yourself is meaningless because maybe it applies to everyone or it applies to no one or it's based on arbitrary cutoff points, right? Yeah, that's, that's a great way to put it. When you, when you use let's define terms, you ask yourself, what, what does this term mean? What, what would it mean to be a failure? Because, you know, a lot of people commit suicide because they believe so strongly that, that they are failures. And then emotional reasoning kicks in, too, because you, and you feel like a failure. You feel like a loser. So you say, I must really be a failure. I must really be a loser. But one kind of helpful technique would, would, would be to ask, ask yourself, now, what's the definition of a failure? Is, is that someone who fails at everything all the time? or at some things some of the time? Well, if a patient, if you said that to someone, you know, a failure is someone that fails at everything all the time. Yeah, and then by that definition, uh, nobody's a failure because nobody fails at everything all the time. In fact, everybody succeeds at most things most of the time. Like I'm holding this pen in my left hand right now and I'm succeeding at that. If I couldn't hold a pen in my left hand, that would be a pretty pretty big deal. I take it for granted. But, you know, we breathe, we pee, we eat, we talk to people, we do all kinds of things. And, of course, we all have, have many failures and many successes. But no human being could fail at all things all the time. So by that definition, uh, nobody's a failure. Well, what if the patient says that they fail at some things? And then I would say then we're all failures because we all fail at, at, at many things. I fail at, at many things, you know, every, every single day. Uh, so by that definition, then all human beings are failures. And so we're all in the same boat. So there's, there's nothing to, uh, to worry about. Well, now, what if someone switches and says, okay, I'm not a failure. Now I've gone through this exercise. Now I'm a success. Yeah, that's not the goal, actually, because there's no such thing as a success or a failure. The goal in depression is not to go from feeling worthless to feeling worthwhile or from feeling like a failure to feeling like a success. 
but rather to give up these labels because positive labels are just positive distortions and they can also be very, uh, not only are they irrational and meaningless, but they can also in, incite you know, violence. That's what Hitler used as, as well. He used positive labeling. The Germans are the superior people, the Aryan, the, the superior r race, do you say? And, and, and then people get to feeling manic and better than other people if you like to have a right to kill or even torture other, uh, other peoples. So we're not trying to go from a negative distortion to a positive distortion, but to get rid of those abstract notions that really don't correspond to anything in reality, but they can be incredibly uh, painful. And uh, what, what my job is, and your job, Rhonda, as therapist, is to free people from the, the prisons that these distorted thoughts create. Hmm. Now, uh, one last quick thing on, on let's define terms. Then sometimes people will say, well, maybe a, a, a failure is someone who, who, fa who fails at, at 51% of things. That, that's something people will try to define it uh, that way. What would you say about that? If I'm just telling myself uh, I'm a failure if I fail at 51% of things. Well, I'd say um, sometimes I fail at 51% of the things 50, uh, that I try. What I would, you know, if I'm a friend of yours, what would you say to me? How would you, how would you talk back to me if I'm telling you, David, I fail at 51% of the things I try. You know, so, so are you saying then that if you fail at 51% of things, you're a failure, and if you fail at 50% of things, you're, you're a success? What, what, what's this? <laughs> oh, that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, because if you 50, 51 is almost exactly the, exactly the same, and no matter what what cutoff might you take? Again, it it it's it's meaningless, and the, and the reason it's meaningless is it's not just a, a word game or a legal argument or a philosophical argument. It's it's because there really is no such thing as a failure or success. H human beings exist, and it, it can be a wonderful thing to be alive. We have like we're having fun fun right right now, but it's it's in the doing of life and the being with with with, with people and the experiencing of things that that's where life can become very, very joyous. That, that's reality here on the surface of the earth. I'm sitting in my office, it's kind of messy, but so, so what? I'm, I'm, I'm having, having fun and I'm not trying to be a success. I'm just trying to, to enjoy life and uh, the, the labels don't, don't help me in, in any way and they don't make sense. But anyway, that's, so, that's just one approach. Yeah, so then when you're doing let's define the, the method, let's define the terms, um, when you, figure, you, you know, you identify one negative thought that creates challenging feelings for you that you have, and then you, then you're talking about asking questions about, then, then you get the person to identify um, what the label is, and then you ask them questions about the definition, then to point out the illogicalness yeah, of it yeah, and the uselessness yeah. of the label. Yeah, I don't like do it in an ever. I don't do it in an adversarial way. If a patient is telling me uh, that he or she feels like a failure, then I say, well, imagine I'm a friend of yours and I'm just like you and I'm kind of telling myself I'm a failure. What, what would you say to me? And then you can ask the patient, to uh, say, do you, do you think I'm a, I'm a failure? I, I just lost my job. Uh, do you, would you say that I'm a failure? Uh, and and, and and, and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the definition of a failure is. Can, can, can you help me? And I, I kind of have it as a friendly dialogue like that to, to lead them to the conclusion that there's not much compassion and saying mean things like that to another person. And then maybe you'd want to be compassionate with, with yourself as well. Um, so it's just, it just one of many, many tech, techniques. And it'd be helpful for some people and maybe, maybe not helpful for for others, but it's a, it's a good one to be aware of. Now the other one is called let's be specific and we're just quickly d d define it uh, and, and then we're going to play it for you so you can hear it in real time with a real patient uh, and a really, a really nice guy too. This is someone 
and and we we played play, played another one of his recordings. Uh, yeah, Bradley recent... was in our episode one ninety four on jumping yeah. to conclusions. Yeah, but he under he underwent a, a tremendous horrific trauma when he was growing up, and his mother and elder brother uh, used to call him all all kinds of uh, names in a, in a very mean mean spirited way, and he was just a little guy and. You know, he. When you're young, you, you you don't really know quite how how to how to think about things. But uh, when he when he grew up, he he incorporated these labels and thinks about himself as as a uh, uh, well, let's see uh, as as a wimp, for for example. I'm not a real man, or or you know I'm. I, 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 I'm a failure, and uh, you know I'm 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 damaged, and, and things like that, and and so when you use be specific again, this is based on the Buddhist notion that these labels exist up in the abstraction in the clouds of abstraction, and that on the surface of the earth there's no such thing as as a real man or a wimp or a, a weirdo or or whatever labels that Bradley uh, uses to to beat up on himself, and when you use let's be specific, you 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 say when I'm calling myself say a weirdo or a failure as a husband. Another one he gets into like like what specifically are you talking about? What time of day was I a failure as a husband? What what where did it happen? What, what, what exactly are we talking about? And then generally you end up drawing a blank because it's just a vague, mean statement with no content. But, uh, uh, and he says, well, if you say like, well, I'm, I, I'm not a, a, a real man, like you just say, well, you know, what, what do you mean by that? Uh, what, when you say I'm not a real man, what, what's the definition of a real man or, or what specifically about me? isn't real then and then he might say oh well you're only you know earning some modest uh, uh, salary and then you can reply to that now that's specific and that's true see in reality Bradley isn't earning a lot of money because he's not very confident he he has the potential to earn a lot of money because he's smart he's a great guy but it's a fact so then then you can say to yourself it's true that I'm not earning a lot of money, and I, I would really love to earn more money, and maybe that's something that, that, that I can work on. So that's called acceptance. You, you see, you can accept something specific about yourself, but this abstraction that you're not a real man, well, what does that mean? That's just a lot of, uh, as the Buddha has so often said, horseshit. Is that a bad say on the podcast? <laughs> kind of, but okay. It's, it's so, a spiritual comment. Though. So, David, is the acceptance <laughs> paradox always a part of be, the method B specific? Yeah, yeah. Uh, be, because you see, your pain only exists on the abstract level. When it comes down to something specific, then you can accept it with, without pain. See, I have many flaws. And so you can point out any of my flaws, and I'll just agree with you as long as they're specific. Mm. Do you, you, you see what I mean? Right. And so when you, you'll, you'll hear that. It, it, it'll hopefully become clear when you listen. It's about a, oh, probably 25 minutes or something like that. But I think you'll enjoy the, this. And I'm extremely grateful to, to you, Bradley, if you're listening, not only for being like a, you know, a, a, great, a, a great friend and, and, and colleague, but, but also for the, the, the kindness and the generosity and the courage to, to share something this inter intensely personal, just as you did, Rhonda, right. with, with, with so many, yeah, yeah. many people. And I, and I think a lot of people are really going to appreciate you. Yeah, we really, we really do appreciate Bradley. And this is David and Bradley, and we're doing a, a brief instructional tutorial on the technique called Let, Let's Be Specific. And hello, Bradley. Hello, David. How are you doing? I, I'm doing good. It's always uh, my pleasure, my great pleasure to be to be working with you, and I appreciate your helping out for this uh, instructional uh, video or audio or whatever you want to call it on on various uh, team therapy techniques. Now, last time I thought we did did a really great one on let's define terms. And the oh, idea, yeah. 
and this this time it's going to be let's be specific and let's be specific is similar but slightly different from let's define terms the basis of it is is that much depression probably most depression uh, re results from distorted thoughts and 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 two of the most common distort and there's a list of 10 distorted cognitive distortions in my book feeling good but two that are related that are almost required for depression are overgeneralization and labeling overgeneralization is where, where you generalize from a specific negative event to yourself so instead of instead of i failed at this you say I'm a failure, or instead of saying I, I, I had a bad, painful interaction with my son, you say I'm a, I'm a bad father, or, or something of that nature. Uh, and, and this has been known since the time of Buddha that those abstractions, when you go into the clouds of abstraction where you say I'm a failure, I'm a, a, bad, a bad father, there, there's no such thing. So specific negative failures can occur and screw ups can occur right. we we all we all have them but there's no such thing as as a failure okay. so so last time when we did let's define terms we show that if you try to define the term like a failure what's the definition of a failure is that someone who fails all of the time some, or of, some the of the time and, right. and if it's all of the time then we're all failures or no no uh, all the no. Then no one's a failure because no one can fail all the time and right. if it's some of the time we're all failures and so you don't have to worry fail. about it right we all fail some of the time and the goal is just to get to get rid of that meaningless label so your suffering will disappear because the, the definition falls apart yeah, that's right. No matter how, how you try to define these terms, the, the definition won't really won't make sense. Now, let's be specific. Is another way of handling these these labels where, if you have a term like "I'm a failure," "I'm a weirdo," you try you go down to spe specificity. What what specifically have I failed at? What specifically about me is is weird and then if you combine that with the acceptance paradox you can generally knock the negative thought out, out of the water okay now, now tell us just briefly we're not going to make this a treatment session but i know that you had a pretty horrible first 20 years of your life with a lot of abuse and negative messages you received from your father your mother and your older brother uh, and that's maybe where a lot of these negative labels uh, that cause your depression where they where they came from and oh definitely can you tell us just a little about that well i grew up in a very abusive home where i was neglected very badly and received very little support and i was constantly abused verbally emotionally physically and uh the abuse took the form the verbal abuse took the form of usually labeling. I was told from a very, very early age, probably five or six at least, that I was abnormal, that I had um, rotten blood, that I was no good, that I was um, a loser and a wimp and a weirdo. And just on and on and on, just very, very abusive, very, very cruel and sadistic child abuse, really. And uh, that was very, very um, painful and confusing for me, especially since it was a very isolated family where I didn't have much contact with neighbors or friends really or relatives B because we moved around a lot i think i ended up going to 13 or 14 different schools in 12 years wow so um yeah it was um it took me many many years to figure out what happened and that it wasn't my fault and just recently i've and, and and in the last 
you know, 20 years, I've, I've really struggled with depression and anxiety. And I'm starting to understand now the, the source of this. For, for many years, I, I just thought it was my fault and I was defective when I was born. And it's dawning on me with your help that that's not true. It was the abuse and the and neglect I experienced growing up, which is the root of all of this. And uh, learning those, these techniques has really helped me a lot. Well, I'm sad to hear that you went through that. As you know, I think the world of you, and it's, it's, it, it hurts my feelings too to see how, how much sadness and depression and shame uh, and humiliation you endured for so for so long and I can imagine uh, qu quite a lot of anger too although oh, yes yeah and uh, uh, I, I see you as a handsome really smart really hard-working really loyal person with uh, fabulous qualities and characteristics and and it just just hard hard to see that you had to had to go through that and by the way on another occasion not not right now because we'll focus on on let's on let's be specific but uh, I, I also want to see if you'd be interested in another technique called a memory rescripting where we actually close your eyes and go into the past and oh, then sure. say to those people the things that you couldn't say because you were too scared at, at the right. time and uh, and maybe change change some of those memories and do some flooding and and because uh, we haven't done any of that stuff right it can be really helpful for for some people but we'll we'll switch we'll just focus on let's be specific so the way i'm going to do it is similar to the last demonstration we did on on let's define terms uh th 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 this is a really warm and powerful way of, of of using this this technique, and I'm going to be a, a friend of, of of yours, Bradley. Uh, not someone you know, uh, but but just just give me a name. And um, I, begin, I can be David if you like. Uh, Johan. Johan. Oh yeah, yeah. That's Yo, good. Yo, your name is Johan Johansson. That's right. That's that's our actual <laughs> family name is Johansson. Uh, all my relatives came from Sweden, as as you know, as did yours, which is kind right. of awesome. But uh, uh, so I'm Johan, and here's the interesting thing: I look a lot like you, and I had a background very very similar to yours. Uh, I had the same kind of abusive, traumatic childhood, and I went to the same schools and had many schools and had the same uh, kinds of problems. And um, and let, let's work on the label. You, you told me one of the labels you've been struggling recently is you're thinking of yourself as a weirdo. Yes. And what are some of the other words? Uh, uh, a freak. Freak. Uh, yeah. Abnormal. Okay. Um, strange, different. Okay. Awesome. That sort of thing. Okay. Um, could could I talk to you for a minute, uh, uh, Bradley? Sure. I, I don't know if you know this, but I had kind of a really traumatic upbringing when I was a kid and had a lot of abuse and a lot of name calling. And I was told that I had, you know, bad blood or that I was defective and, and stuff like that. And even to to this, that I was a weirdo and stuff. And even to this day, uh, sometimes I get depressed and I, I call myself a, a weirdo. And I'm trying to figure out uh, uh, if that's true. Um, no, let's set it up differently. Let's okay. set it up differently. <laughs> this All won't right. be perfect. Uh, right. Yeah, uh, you're, you, let, I, I, I'm gonna be uh, someone who's uh, kind of talking to you, Br Bradley. Okay. Um, uh, let me see now. Um, no, no, I want you to uh, actually to attack me. We'll do externalization okay. of voices. You be, be the, the negative, negative Bradley. I'm the negative voice. And I'll be the positive Bradley. We're, what's okay. your name? Bradley. And what's my name? Bradley. That's right. Okay. And so I want you to say to me, and oh, little Misty was here. 
little Misty, her kitty, uh, who you know a little bit. So uh, I want you to be the negative Bradley and, and hit me with uh, one of those labels. You know, uh, Bradley, uh, I just want to tell you that the fact is that you're just a weirdo. Well, um, that's interesting that you, that you say that. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure what you're referring to. Can, can you tell me specifically something about me that you think is weird? Yeah, you're not normal. Well, that's kind of a synonym, <clears throat> and there's, there's probably a lot about me that's not normal or that's a little weird, but I, I don't even know what you're talking about. Can you tell me some specific thing? Is it the way I look, the way I act, the way I dress? Um, well, just the way you're, we're talking your, right now, what, what, yeah, tell your me. general behavior, your okay, personality. I don't, uh, yeah, well, I, I actually, I lost my personality years ago and general behavior doesn't <laughs> exist, but specific behavior does. Can you tell me something I might have done today or yesterday that seemed weird or abnormal? What time of day was it? Well, you're not, you're not good with, uh, people. You, 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 you okay, at of, what time of day wasn't I good with, with someone? And who, what was the name of the person? And what exactly did I do? Are you referring to the fact that I have some social anxiety? Yeah, you just kind of rub people the wrong way. For, who, who did I rub the wrong way today? Well, you know, you, you go in the store and uh, you don't even look at the cashier. You just stare at the floor. Well, I, it's true that I'm anxious when I go into the store. I should probably pull my eyes off the floor and smile and say hello to people. But is that all you meant when you said I was a weirdo that I had that I have social anxiety? Well, your your appearance isn't well, isn't well, normal. I, well, I'm wearing a beautiful sweater right now. What, <laughs> what what are you referring to? What is it about my you, appearance? You um, is it my third breast or? Well, the fact that, that I have two heads. What what are what are we talking about here? Well, that and and the face on the back of your head. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you people look at you and they can see that you're you're different. You're not normal. What's the name of the person who looked at me and and thought that? What's the evidence for that? And what did they well, what did they see about me? I, I'm, they're not, I'm not that bright out. either. Well, I don't know what you're referring to. They they don't come out and well, say well, it. They're well, what are they what are they thinking? They're thinking this guy's weird. Look at him. In, in what way? What about me is weird? You're just kind of gangly and thin. Well, I'm, and... I'm I'm on the thin side. I think our our country is bothered more by fat, over, overweight people than people who are thin. And I'm, I'm I actually am uh, you know I'm over six feet tall and I work out and and I'm lean and uh, you know the, the, there's nothing out of the ordinary well, there. You're just kind of goofy looking. What about me looks goofy? Show me something goofy. Is it my hand? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, uh, you, your features don't go together. Like my they eyes and my mouth yeah, and my yeah. nose. It just well, I don't know what work. you're talking about. They, I've been, they've been working together on my face for many years now. The, the whole package there. It's just. You mean there are people who are more handsome than I am? Oh yes. And are there people who are less handsome than I am? Certainly. So is that true of all human beings, all men in the world? Well, yeah, 99.99%, right. yeah, I'd say. Right, right. But, but I think I'm handsome enough to have a wonderful wife and wonderful family. And, uh, uh, you know, I actually, I like the way I look. Well, remember when you were a kid and- uh, Let's you... just stop for a minute, who's, who's winning? <laughs> You're winning. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? Huge. I have. N I'm not getting any kind of traction, really. Okay. Well, let's try a role reversal. Okay. Um, could I talk to you for a minute, Bradley? Sure. You know who I am. You are the the negative, Bradley. Right. Now, for teaching purposes, this is going to sound ki kind of rough, but I think this is the most compassionate thing one can do is to give a person the chance to, to crush these labels and overgeneralizations that cause for you and for anybody so, so much unbearable distress. But Bradley, I hadn't wanted to hurt your feelings, but I want to remind you so you don't forget that you are a weirdo. Well, uh, what about me is weird? Oh, um, everything. Just you have, you have bad blood. You were born defective. 
Well, can can you? Uh, I'm kind of slow, you know. I'm kind of a simple guy. Can you give me something specific I can hang my hat on? Well, yeah, you're tall and you're on the thin side. Well, that's true. I'm kind of I'm over I'm over six feet tall and I'm slender. But wh where where do you get from that that I'm weird? Well, when you walked into the store today, you were looking at the feeling anxious and, and staring at the floor and you didn't smile and say hello to people. Well, that's true. I kind of have social anxiety, you know. Sometimes I feel uncomfortable when I'm around people, but... Uh, well, that's because you're weird and they're all thinking you're weird. Everyone knows you're weird. So is the is, truth. Is that what you mean, that I'm weird because I have social anxiety? Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Well, that's a very, very, very popular diagnosis from what I read in the papers. A lot of people have it, and they're they're searching for help with it. Millions and millions of people. So, how is that? We are they all weird? Okay, who won? I won. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? Huge. That felt uh, that felt pretty huge. Yeah. Now the. To, get, to break things down into simple, we're doing role play here to bring, let's be specific, to, to life. But the, the idea is that when you're beating up on yourself and, and attaching a negative label to yourself, like uh, I'm a bad mother, get out of the clouds of abstraction and yeah. say, what exactly did I do? Maybe did I shout yes. at my kids or I did something to hurt their feelings? And then and then use the acceptance paradox. If you have screwed up in some way, uh, accept w what you've done and then maybe yeah. attempt to correct it. Tell your son or daughter that you feel bad for getting mad and being impatient with them and let them know you really love them and turn it into a positive because right. we all screw up sometimes with, you know, with, with, with our kids. So, so, so the key to it is to use the technique to go from this vague overgeneralization, the abstraction, to something specific and real that you can get your hooks into. Yes, and when you do that, the, the suffering will disappear. You'll right. find that the whole thing is a lot of malarkey. Now let's, yeah. let's try it again with another label, uh, defective. Okay. Okay, uh, could I talk to you for a minute, uh, Bradley? Definitely. Uh, I, I'm, I'm the negative Bradley, as you okay. know, and I just want to remind you that you're just a little on the defective side now, aren't we? Well, I, I'm not sure what you mean by that. You got, you got to keep things at about a fourth grade level with me. I'm kind of a simple guy. I'm, I'm very concrete in my thinking. So, like, what, what do you mean defective? Can you give me something uh, specific? And now I'm stunned. I'm, I'm beaten. Because <laughs> I, I don't have any bullets. Oh, well, I can right. say, oh, well, well, you get socially anxious a lot of the time. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Good call. I do feel socially anxious. And uh, that's a problem I'm working on, actually. In fact, right now, with uh, Dr. David Burns. And uh, it's a very common diagnosis. So I, I, I don't see how it follows that because I get socially anxious, I'm defective. Those two things don't seem to go together. So uh, is everyone in the world that experiences social anxiety, are they defective? Would you say that? Who won? I won. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? I'd say huge. Yeah, I agree. I think you did awesome on okay. that. When I give workshops, I ask the therapists, there's a hundred of them in the room or 200, how many of you get socially anxious at times? I did a two day workshop on social anxiety. And so I would ask them and I would say at least 85% uh, of the hands go up. Oh yeah. Oh so, yeah. Uh, most human beings have some social anxiety. I've had tons of social anxiety myself. I'm starting to realize that it's much more common yeah. than I thought. When I was a kid, I thought it was just me. Right. Because it doesn't show. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It, you can't tell by looking at someone most of the time. 
yeah. how they're feeling. Yeah, yeah. So that's the technique. Let's be specific. And so uh, just to, to help the folks here, I'm going to ask you to make the teaching points so that people who are listening to this who want to try Let's Be, let's be Specific will we'll have, you know, the, the bullet points. Okay. So the, the keys to it is if you have an, an overgeneralization or label, something that's vague and broad, overly broad, and in a, it's an abstraction, that's the distortion. That's where the pain comes from. That's where your depression and anxiety comes from. The, the technique, the purpose of the method is to bring it down to earth, to something specific and real that you can actually identify and work with. You can't work with clouds. You can't pin them down. You can pin down something specific and real. Like if you say, oh, I'm defective. That's so broad, there's nothing there. You can't work with that. What's defective about me? Oh, I'm shy with when I'm talking to people. Okay, th there's something. I'm shy, yes, that's true. That's acceptance. I can accept that. I do have some social anxiety. That's true. Does that mean I'm defective? No. This is a, a real and specific thing. I, I, I feel some social anxiety with people. And with that, okay, this is something I can work on. I can, it's, an, it's a flaw that I have that many people have. I can work on it and I can also accept it with a, a sense of self-esteem. I love and, that. Yeah, that's crystal clear. And, um, and then also one can think about, see a lot of these techniques are different ways of saying the same thing. Yes. There are different paths to enlightenment. These two are especially important for you. But another technique is called uh, the semantic technique. And there's a lot of different ways to use the semantic technique. But along with what you were just, just saying, uh, is there a difference between calling yourself a defective human being versus calling yourself a human being with defects? Yes. Or One is a, a gross overgeneralization and a hurtful label. And the other one is more specific and real and also more compassionate. Exactly. Because you're getting closer to reality. The further you get from reality, the more pain and more distortion you have. The further you get into these cognitive distortions, yes. overgeneralization, exactly. labeling, self-blame, hidden should statements, all or nothing thinking, and so forth. Because a, a human being with defects, that describes every one of us. Yeah. We all have defects and flaws. We all make errors. But when, right. when you say defective person, or a defective human being, now you're starting to f create some pain, right? some suffering, because it's distorted. Right. Well, that's about all, all she wrote for today, but I, I really enjoy and appreciate your input for a multitude of reasons, but uh, two of them is you're a good, crisp, clear thinker, so you help me teach these ideas. Secondly, you're an end user. You're someone for whom this is incredibly relevant and then so right. when we do the role play it, it it brings it to life in a way yes. that you can't do in a textbook or something i totally agree yeah okay have a good thank one you. thank you so much david yeah and then the next time we'll do uh, mem memory rescripting and cognitive oh, great. flooding because oh, we haven't great. used any of those tools and maybe uh time traveler yeah time travel absolutely yep all right. Okay. Great. Have, have a great evening. And thanks again. I really Thank appreciate you. it. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes for this episode under the podcast page. You will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non therapists. We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. 
The theme music is Gypsy Jazz in Paris, 1935, composed and performed by Brett Van Donsel. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. Thank you.